but at the end of this uh, interaction you should be able to understand the principles of ihc perform ihc with good quality control and interpret the ihc strain slides and use the ihc for diagnosis prognosis and theranosis so immunohistochemistry is nothing but we are looking for antigens of a specific cell each cell has a specific uh, material what we call antigen and through the antigen antibody interaction we highlight that particular antigen and we see that that is the basic of immunohistochemistry and the end result will be two colors it can be a brown color or it can be a red color when you use the substrate dab it gives a brown color and when you use the substrate aec it will give you a red color you may ask me why there are two colors why can't we just have one color uh, life is like that okay everything has its own positive and negative so we should have a choice when you use dab it gives a brown color and it remains there for weeks but it is a carcinogen whereas aec is a less uh, harmful and it gives a red color but that red color fades away in one or two weeks so if you want to review a ihc with the aec in after two weeks you may not be able to see the perfect picture that's why we use dab mostly the, this immunohistochemistry answers three questions what is the tumor how aggressive is the tumor and what and who is likely to respond to targeted therapy and accordingly it can be classified as diagnostic markers prognostic markers and uh, theranostic markers and the last word theranosis is a new word but uh, we pathologists will be playing a very uh, vital role in uh, telling which patient will respond to what uh, medicine whenever i want you to take a selfie i will put this uh, icon and you can take a shot of that to understand the whole uh, pathology this basic uh, picture is very very important this is a picture of a cell and this is the cell membrane this is the cytoplasm this is the nucleus and in the nucleus we have the chromosome and this chromosome is made up of dnas and this dna passes instruction through mrna to ribosomes and these ribosomes produce chains of amino acids which are assembled to form the protein and these proteins are responsible for whatever we are seeing if you are listening to what i am talking it is due to some protein if i am able to talk it is due to some protein and how to nicely link all these things with pathology when you see the architecture and cell morphology of a particular uh, organ or lesion it is known as histopathology when you see only cell morphology the architecture is not there when you see only cell morphology it is known as cytology when you look into the chromosomes it is known as genetics and when you look into the dna it is known as genomics and when you look into the rna because the dna passes the information through rna to produce the proteins and when you look into the rnas and study the rnas that science is known as transcriptomics and when you look into the proteins read the proteins it is known as proteomics and these proteins will get metabolized and when you read the metabolites it is known as metabolomics genetics genomics transcriptomics proteomics and metabolomics are very very important for personalized medicine which is uh, we are doing it in this 21st century because previously we are paying more attention to histopathology and cytology but now we are more into omics and uh, the ihc represent either the transcriptomic products or the proteins or the metabolomics this is the part that is highlighted by ihc this slide is very very important before going further any marker or most of the markers now they tell what is the lineage of the cell it is not telling whether it is tumor or not so if it is a positive for a marker it is not equal to tumor for example ttf you all remember the thyroid transcription factor positive in thyroid and in lung cancer 
normal thyroid tissue normal bronchial lining epithelium will be positive for ttf it just says it is cell of thyroid or lung origin only the lineage not it is tumor 95% of the markers are lineage markers they are not saying whether it is benign or malignant 5% of markers now we are getting into them they say when it is present it is tumor for example glypicon in hepatocellular carcinoma okay and these markers can cross react for example cytokeratin is supposed to be positive only in the epithelium but it can be seen in some other non epithelial components also so these three points you have to keep it in mind so briefly we take the tissue sections we are looking for the antigen so we unmask the antigen and block the endogenous uh, activity we use the primary antibody to bind with this antigen and then highlight it with the secondary antibody coupled with the chromogen chromo, chromogen substrate and then we counter stain mount it and see it under the microscope and depending upon the substrate you are chromogen you are using it will be brown or red in color and quality control is very very important and uh, any quality again this uh, quality control they may ask you in the exam and whenever they talk about quality control you have to divide them into pre analytical analytical and post analytical and we have to have positive control negative control and antigenicity control this is slightly controversial okay many people don't like vimentin to be used as antigenicity control but just keep it in your mind we have to check for antigenicity also when you use the positive and negative control the positive control means cells or tumor that will be positive for the uh, particular antigen for example sma you use uh, smooth muscle or leomyoma as a control so that sma will be positive negative means same uh, leomyoma you use instead of uh, the adding the primary antibody you add serum or water so that it will be negative so the positive control should be positive and negative control should be negative then only ihc is valid in all other combinations the ihc is not valid antigenicity control for example there is a tumor you are running 20 markers all the markers are negative so what will you do you want to know whether the cell is having the antigen or not for example when all the markers are negative and vimentin also negative those cells may not be showing up the antigen or the antigen is destroyed during processing or so many factors are there when you run many markers run vimentin also if vimentin is also negative along with all the markers that means that ihc is not valid when you run lot of markers they are all negative but vimentin is positive that means we have to increase the number of tests to identify the antigen which is which is not seen in the uh, first batch of ihc that is the antigenicity control interpretation of ihc is also very very important you have to remember so three things you have to see where is the location what is the intensity of the uh, chromogen and what is the percentage of cells and you have to always make sure the ihc is present in the lesion and not in the background location of as i told you in the cell the cell is made up of cell membrane cytoplasm or nucleus so you have to see whether the marker is there in the cell membrane here you can see nicely her to new on the cell membrane or in the cytoplasm in the cytoplasm it can be granular it can be fibrillary or it can be diffuse here you can see dot like positivity in the cytoplasm this is so classic of uh, merkel cell tumor here you can see diffusely in a thyroid thyroglobulin which is diffusely positive or is it nuclear nuclear marker is better than cytoplasmic marker here you can see nice uh, beautiful brownly stained nuclei in a breast cancer for estrogen receptor so this is membrane this is cytoplasmic granular this is cytoplasmic diffuse this is nuclear and then sometimes you may see extracellular material in isc for example amyloid what we see amyloid in um, uh, 
medullary carcinoma thyroid may be positive for calcitonin. The amyloid seen in uh, uh, multiple myeloma can be positive for light stains, okay, light uh, bands or light chains. Intensity, it can be weak, intermediate or strong, okay. For example, this is a very strong, all of them are very strong except this thyroglobulin which is intermediate. So that's the intensity and lastly percentage, number of cells. <coughs> it's always better to tell 100% uh, of tumor cells are positive or 10% of tumor cells are positive. You all know we use two terms, uh, focal and diffuse. There is no strict criteria when do you call focal and when do you call diffuse. The rule I follow when it is less than 25% it is focal and when it is more than 25% it is diffuse. But there is no uh, cutoff given in any textbooks. So location, intensity, percentage of cells. This is very, very important in the interpretation. Coming to the role of uh, diagnostic markers, you see any tumor, there will be four patterns, okay? It can be epithelioid pattern, it can be spindle cell pattern, it can be round cell pattern, or it can be pleomorphic pattern. These are all the four primary patterns of tumors you see. And when it is epithelioid, the differential diagnosis includes carcinoma, melanoma, sarcoma, and lymphoma. So the initial markers should be pancreatin for carcinomas, SOX10 for melanoma, and uh, types of some types of uh, sarcoma like uh, neural origin, and uh, CD45 for lymphoma. When there is a spindle lesion, the differential diagnosis is sarcoma, spindle cell carcinoma, spindled out carcinoma, or melanoma. See, the markers may be mainly for the sarcoma, okay, SMA for smooth muscle, Desmin for uh, skeletal muscle, SOX10 for melanoma and the neural origin and pancreatin for uh, sarcomatoid carcinomas. For round cell, the differential diagnosis, we will be seeing uh, that in detail, but initial differential diagnosis is lymphoma, small cell carcinoma, sarcoma or blastomas. So we have a big list of markers, CD45, INSM1, which is a marker for uh, neuroendocrine tumors now, NKX2.2 for Ewing sarcoma, Desmin for uh, rhabdomyosarcoma, sarcoma, SOX10 for neural and melanocytic, and pancreatin for epithelial uh, or epithelioid sarcomas. For pleomorphic tumors, the differential diagnosis is sarcoma, carcinoma, melanoma, and lymphoma. So the markers can be pancreatin, SOX10, and CD45. Uh, this picture will tell you the patterns and what are all the differential diagnosis and what are all the initial markers you can use. You cannot run 100 markers initially. First, we have to identify whether it is carcinoma, sarcoma, melanoma, and then we have to include the other markers. Before ordering any marker, please give a call to clinician because most of the time the clinicians may be uh, having a history and that history will help you to uh, select the markers. And when it is an epithelial marker, rather than running pancreatin, we are now using the cytokeratin 7 and cytokeratin 20. So the epithelial tumors can be classified into four quadrants whether it is CK20 negative or CK7 positive, CK20 positive, CK7 positive, CK20 negative, CK7 positive, uh, sorry, negative, and CK20 positive and CK7 negative. So this uh, four quadrant uh, rule is very, very useful when you use the CK7 and 20. You will see some examples. For example, lung cancer, this you can see a very nice uh, uh, in the lung, you have to first see whether it is small cell or non-small cell. And when it is non-small cell, you have to categorize it whether it is adenocarcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma. Here, this is a very nice uh, adenocarcinoma of the lung that is positive for CK7, but CK20 is negative. This is a adenocarcinoma of the colon, nicely negative for CK7 and positive for CK20. This is a dermal tumor. You can see the skin here and small blue cells. And these tumor cells are dot-like positivity of the cytoplasm for CK20. And that is classic for Merkel cell tumor. And now you all know Merkel cell tumor is due to Merkel cell polyoma virus. And we have a nuclear positive marker, Merkel cell polyoma virus. Uh, 
and that will clinch the diagnosis. Urothelial carcinoma will be positive both for CK7 and CK20 and RCC will be negative for CK7 and CK20. Even though there is a big list of uh, tumor in each quadrant, just remember one or two. For example, CK7, lung breast, okay, CK20, colon. Both are positive urothelial carcinoma. Both are negative renal cell carcinoma. But keep that table handy. So depending upon the pattern, you can form the differential diagnosis and correlate with the clinical history, radiology uh, to come to your diagnosis.